this video, we're going to talk about how to sketch a line with all the properties you could want. And in particular, how to do the sketch so that everybody understands what you've drawn. I want to just go through this with an example and we can walk through the steps with the example. So the example we're going to use is the equation C of T equals negative 0.634 T plus 51.683 and that represents the number of US cable TV subscribers in millions T years after 2012. So for example, T equals zero corresponds to 2012. That's the problem. And you might just hear that or read that and think, whoa, I, this is just too much for me. But we can go through it in a very methodical fashion and make sure that we are getting an accurate graph. So the first thing we're going to do is the thing I always do at the beginning of an application problem, which is to declare the variables, to write out what the variables mean. So we need to write out what T is and what C is. This helps make sense of which variable goes on which axis and all that good stuff. T is the number of years after 2012. C is the number of US cable TV subscribers in millions. Now those two things represent the majority of words in the problem. Let's just make sure we understand which is dependent and which is independent. The thing that's easy for us to track is the number of years after 2012. So that's going to be our independent variable. The number of US cable TV subscribers is something we measure every year. So that's what we're observing. That's the dependent variable. Which means that when we draw our axes, the cable TV subscribers is going to be on the vertical axis and the time is going to run on the horizontal axis. The first thing to consider when we're drawing a real world graph is whether it makes sense to just draw quadrant one. In other words, where everything is positive. So the number of years after 2012, that's going to be positive. We're not going back in time, only forward. And uh, the number of US cable TV subscribers, it can't go negative. So it will be in quadrant one. So we can start by just saying, let's just draw quadrant one. I've got this handy little ruler here. So I'm going to go ahead and use that to draw my axes. And now I can label which axis is which. The horizontal axis is the time. So I'm just going to write time and then put the units in parentheses years. The vertical axis is the number of cable TV subscribers in millions. So let's just write, make sure you leave yourself enough space that you can add a scale. If there are X or Y intercepts, we often want to show at least one of them on the graph. So in this case, it might be useful to calculate the X and Y intercepts or as it would be in this problem, the T and C intercepts. C of T equals negative 0 0.634 T plus 51.683. Now, real world problems don't always have nice numbers and that's why we practice with them. A point on this function is going to be written with the independent variable first, that's the T, and the dependent variable second, that's the C. So any point on this equation would be parentheses T comma C, close parentheses. That's important because it'll help us with finding the intercepts, right? I'm going to first let T equal zero to find the C intercept. Letting T equal zero, I'll have C equals negative 0 0.634 times zero plus 51.683. That simplifies to just be C equals 51.683. And so this will be the point 0 comma 51.683. We're going to find the T intercept. And to do that, we're going to let C equals 0. So now we've got 0 equals negative 0 0.634 T plus 51.683. I'm solving for t, so I need to isolate that 0.634t. Now, I'm going to just move it to the left-hand side because then it'll be positive. Both sides will be positive. So I'm going to add 0.634t to both sides. So that's 0 plus 0.634t equals negative 0.634t plus 51.683 plus 0.634t. So I've done the plus 0.634t to both sides of the existing equation. 
now I have 0.634t on the left, and that's equal to 51.683 on the right. My last step is to divide on both sides by 0.634. That's 0.634t divided by 0.634, and 51.683 divided by 0.634. On the left, we simplify to t, and on the right, we need to do a quick calculation. 51.683 divided by 0.634. Notice you can use Desmos to do simple calculations. You'll see the result appear in a box. Let's just round it, 81.52. It's not exact, but that's good enough. t equals 81.52, and now let's write the point. The t value comes first, 81.52 and 0 for c, because we plugged 0 in for c. Now we have the two intercepts, and they're both below 100. So we have 51.68 on the y-axis and 81.52 on the x-axis. Let's just use that to count both axes. Let's count from 0 to 100 on the x and y-axis, or the t and c axis in this case. Moving back over to our graph, we're going to count by 100. So let's go ahead and do that. We want evenly spaced numbers. I don't want to count every 100. So I might just count by uh, 20s on the horizontal axis, evenly spaced, to the best of your ability, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And on the y-axis, I'll just do the same, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. We've chosen a decent viewing window for our sketch. We're going to show the X and Y intercepts on here, but let me first just check off that we have labeled the axis with evenly spaced scale. We have described the axis, like we've labeled the time and the number of US cable TV subscribers and millions. Now we just need to sketch the graph and label those intercepts. Now, you might go over to Desmos to see what the graph looks like and then bring it back over here. Another way to do this would be to just use the intercepts we found and plot those on the graph. I'm going to start with that. I'm going to live dangerously. So 81.52, 0, that's the horizontal intercept. So I'll just put a point down there, about 81, and I'm going to label that. 81.52 comma 0. And my other point was 0 comma 51.68. That's the y-intercept. A little bit above the middle point between 40 and 60. That's 0 comma 51.68. This is a linear function. There is just the variable t, c of t. So uh, no squares on the variables or anything like that. So we can actually just draw the line at this point. I'd encourage you, especially if you're drawing a line, to draw a straight line. Uh, use your picture ID for school or something like that in a pinch. And here's my straight line. So the result is a straight line that decreases and it starts at 51.68 on the y-axis and ends at 81.52 on the x-axis. Let's double check it by graphing it in Desmos. So we'll graph c of t equals negative 0.634t plus 51.683. The current graph I'm looking at is horrible. All you need to know is it might be a good idea to zoom back to the home button and then restart. So I'm gonna just press the home button on the right hand side of the screen. That zooms me back to the origin and then I'm just gonna pan out just a bit so that I see the two intercepts on the graph. When I touch the y-intercept, I see 0, 51.68, bingo, that's what we had. And I see the y-intercept when I tap that one, 81.519. So we're good. We have exactly what we calculated to be the x and y intercepts. To recap, when you sketch a graph, you really need to do a few things. You need to decide on what you need to show. 
Do you need to show all four quadrants of the graph or just the positive quadrant? And in many real world graphs, it's just the top right quadrant where everything is positive. You need to determine which variable goes on the horizontal axis and which variable goes on the vertical axis. And that has to do with which variable is independent and which variable is dependent. Then you need to decide what your scale is going to be on each axis. And intercepts are a great way to tell what the scale might need to be. So sometimes calculating the intercepts is a good next step. When you draw your scale, make sure you're using evenly spaced intervals and make sure you label what those values are. Finally, once your graph is drawn, if there are important properties of the graph, like intercepts for a line, please label those intercepts on your graph so that if your graph is a little bit sketchy, haha, a little pun there, your teacher will know that even though you didn't draw it completely accurately, you did know what those points were. Sometimes it's really hard to eyeball where a point is on a graph. One last thing, it really helps when you're drawing straight lines to use something that helps you draw straight lines. I highly recommend just pulling out what's in your wallet, use a credit card, use an ID, use something to draw the line straight. And that way it'll be much clearer to your instructor or whoever is looking at your graph what is actually going on.